Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have decided that it is time to build a larger launch complex and a larger rocket. Uh, we have not unlocked everything that is necessary for this rocket. In particular, we have the LR-105 here. But this rocket is set up so that we don't need that right away. Uh, we are going to be able to use an LR-43-89 there instead because the tank is the same tank that we've been using for our Thorish rocket. We just need to fully utilize it. We've got a little extension up here, 4 meters, that is tooled. Uh, same diameter, obviously. And so we can use it in this variant first and then... Uh, later on use it with the LR-105 or just use it right away. Uh, it, it's a uh, little bit lighter with the LR-105 because the LR-105 doesn't have as much uh, thrust so we don't want to use the full tankage mass otherwise we exceed its burn time uh, but it provides more delta V. You can see here even though this is like 110 tons this is 9564 but it doesn't have very good delta V at sea level. It's got uh, only a 210 second ISP at sea level. But even if we fully fuel this, uh, this whole business only gives 9,135 with 125 tons. But we're going to size the pad for this rocket uh, as it is fully fueled and with room for bigger upper stages, of course. And then uh, in this configuration, we can carry quite a large upper stage if we want to because of the high thrust to weight ratio there. And yeah, for now, we've got the Veronique stage there. And I've set it up with the little satellite for our solar power contract. And the idea here is that I've just covered it with solar panels. There's no Araby, it's just a bunch of solar panels. And the reason why the fairing is the diameter that it is, is because we already have that diameter tooled. So, uh, I don't want to waste money, darn it. I don't care what anybody else says. So, uh, we do have some tooling involved here. And we'll set it up so that we are using the full tankage mass and we're going with the full mass here. So we'll set the LR-105 aside, even though that's part of the plans for the future. And uh, so we have a bigger avionics unit, of course. The avionics unit is set to 150 tons, again, just in case we want a bigger um, upper stage. And well, the upper stage should be able to handle itself. Uh, this upper stage core has four tons, but maybe we want more boosters, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, just for the future, 150 seems like a good idea. Of course, bigger payloads as well. Uh, and then we have nose cones here. I really wish we could tweak scale the no, these nose cones, but we can't. So, I, especially these that tilt in. I really wanted to use those, but we can't tweak scale. Oh, I don't have tweak scale. And I would like tweak scale, and for another reason as well, but I'm not too sure RP1 is meant to have tweak scale. You guys can tell me that in the comments. We don't have a whole lot to um, tool here. And in fact, I'm just going to tool what we've got listed here. It's not that much, considering the size of the rocket. Okay, so I've called it the Atlas, because it's like an Atlas-ish. And we are going to build a new launch complex for it. So this is ELA-2. Maximum tonnage, 150, uh, 154 because we've got a 150 ton core there and a 4 ton core there. Uh, so we'll just go with that for now. Might want more than that, we'll see. But it's a fair upgrade over our current launch complex. And we definitely need uh, length and width. Uh, th would it really be a big difference? Let's just get 8x8 just in case. And the height limit, let's just get 32. Wow, okay, that's a lot more expensive. 30. Uh, okay, 28. Um, no, okay, 30. We have to think about the next payload and upper stage, so maybe 32. 35. I'll go with 35. Okay, show hide resources. We'll have it for this rocket as it is, but we'll probably have to add more stuff to it. And we are going to build this new launch complex. It's going to take 233 days. 
and I'll have a yearly upkeep of a bit. So, yep, that is presumably building. We don't know if the rocket's going to work right or not, but it's bigger. <laughs> we can get better rockets later. So that's building, and we'll finish in February 27th. Uh, February 27th. Our uh, deadline for early satellites is August 26th, but these kinds of big rockets got to take a while to build, and we're going to have to hire more engineers, so there's that. Now, we are researching the mature supersonic flight. That will be done in September, and then we'll have to build the jet that's going to go along with that. We should try a contract while ELA-2 is building, try a contract at ELA-1. Okay, so what we're going to try to do is the solar power satellite contract again, and I've done the same thing I did with the other mock-up, and we've just surrounded it with solar panels so that it hopefully will recharge regardless of orientation, and well, at least on the sunlit side, of course, and we've sized them so that they're big enough so that they can make up for the difference. There should be at least two panels on each side that would charge at any given time and so that'll be fine there uh, that's 50 watts up there and we only need 25 with this core so that should do the trick and then down here we've got these if it's directly pointing at the bottom it might not be great but these each get 24 watts and there's four of them there it should work out after we light the SRBs it's a little bit dodgy but um, um, it's tight. Okay, but uh, maybe I'll underdo this tank a little touch just to ensure that we have control. Mature supersonic flight will actually complete first, so we'll also queue up and I'll talk about the Mach 2 jet. So let's go to the SPH. So it looks a lot like our previous jet. Except we have put in the J79 turbo jet, which says it's the Mach 2 capable jet engine, and it was on the F-104. I've increased the size of the drag chutes because I wasn't satisfied with the deceleration that we got. And basically I just said wanted deceleration 20 instead of 10. Uh, so that might be harsh, right? Uh, it might be too much deceleration, but... I'm going to try it. And we also have unlocked the air brakes. But the problem is we don't have tweak scale. So again, if tweak scale works uh, for RP1, I mean, I know I mean, there's caveats with it working with the latest version of KSP. But um, if it works with RP1, then it'd be great because we can't have the air brakes be this big. I mean, they're not that heavy, actually. They're about 50 kilograms, but it looks dangerous. <laughs> so I don't know what it does to our uh, transonic design either. Let's see. Um, take that off. Oh, not much, at, actually. Well, obviously, if you extend it, though. Boy. Oh, so that should change, but I guess FAR doesn't understand the animation. I don't know. That's somewhat worrisome. But anyway, this is our Mach 2 plane. And we've got the drag chutes, we've got the emergency chutes, we've got the center of mass here and the center of lift there, similar to the other one. Uh, the center of lift is further back than I would like. Um, I'll, let me just consider sliding this up a bit. I can't figure out how to get rid of that little bump. I think it has to do with the engine or the landing gear. I've moved the landing gear around, but I just can't deal with it. And the parachutes and the air intake, I've tried to tweak it. Also, this tick mark in the back I don't like. I don't know why that's happening. We're not getting any extra area in the back. It shouldn't be going up like that, but it is. So, yeah. That is the XLJ79. So that'll take until November 10th. It looks like, which wasn't what I was saying in there, but um, I'm glad it's not any longer. So we can actually construct rockets and planes at the same time. All right, completing the Thorish 6.
So the terms of the solar power contract is we have to have a periapsis above 300 kilometers and stay up there for 14 days and have a positive energy balance. Well, let's find out. All right, SAS on, throttle is up, and any other problems? No, ignition. And launch, we're just going to a normal orbit and we really would like to optimize it. It's a bit tight on delta V after all. We want a 300 kilometer periapsis, so uh, let's make sure we don't underdo that. Okay, uh, well, separation, and actually we'll start this one. Uh, oh, did I even tilt the... Oh shoot, uh, that is not what I wanted to do. Oh shoot. Okay, RCS. We'll have to do RCS with it. Well, while we're here, fairings. Well, I think we can light the engine. Alright, we will have that 300 kilometer periapsis. Right, no, don't stop rolling. Oh, no, no. Uh, dup. Okay, selling the fuel down for the upper stage. I, I probably should be at zero if we can get there. Oh, I've made it wobbly. Well, let's try it. Uh, might have a little bit too much pitch. It's wobbling all over the place. I don't think we have enough. Power balance seems fine, though. The problem is the solar panels are really heavy, so... If we weren't wobbling all over the place, that would be helpful, too, but we're too slow. We don't have enough. So, alright, but yeah, power balance is okay. Maybe I'm overdoing it on the solar panels. If we could cut that down a little bit, that would be better. Alright, so I've made a few adjustments and we are going to use the RCS to settle this down this time and only use the SRBs when we need to spin up to release the upper stage. So that would, should be better. I've reduced the amount of HTP we have in these tanks by just underutilizing there because we seem to have plenty. And uh, I've reduced the size of the fairings because we've also reduced the size of the solar, solar panels just a little bit. But also, I reduced the size of the avionics core. It's actually the same EC amount, it's just uh, less of the additional tank volume. And that is because we, uh, well, let me pull this apart for a sec. Uh, we have it floating. We're actually using the very strong solar panels, very heavy solar panels, as structural parts, basically. Uh, I, I just tweaked the tank down from it, so that saves us a little bit. So we're not using, we're not extending that for a large, uh, as a larger part in order to fit the solar panels on. So, iffy, but darn it, the solar panels are so heavy they ought to be able to take it. And, yeah, that's uh, getting us a little bit more juice. Uh, less burn time on the ARB stage because we were actually using some of the space in the, in the core for extra AJ-10 propellant. Um, I haven't got it here now. Uh, I guess I could sneak that in. It actually reduces our delta V though. <laughs> so maybe I shouldn't do that. I, I don't know why it reduces our delta V, but that's what it seemed to do. Anyway, we're pushing the burn time anyway. All right, we will build this. Okay, here we go for Mach 2 again. And at least this time my throttle's working, so that's nice. And I'll just start it running anyway. All right. Let's be cautious. Really need to be able to tweak scale the intakes too. Okay, ah, uh, not quick enough. 
the main landing gear. We were too fast. I don't think it has any physical effect though. In other words, on the drag. It's possible I could have rotated faster. But I didn't want to scrape the engine off the tail. <laughs> up we go. I don't think I actually pick, uh, picked up the Mach 2 contract, but we're mostly in, in for the science anyway. It does take time to get to Mach 2 though, which is why we packed a lot of fuel. But even with the F-104, just having one of these jets required a very, very thin body. This isn't looking very convincing at the moment though. And also, at the rate we're going, I'm gonna have to ditch it in the water. It's close, 1.93-ish right now. But not close enough. Well, I'm going to try and turn around. This got off to a bad start with the landing gear anyway. I don't know if we can make it back to the space center or not. But we'll see. Also, a uh, barrier to making a thinner body is just the simple size of the engines, which would poke out in that case. I've already made the bo body hollow. Also, some of the more interesting shapes uh, are complicated by the fact that I've got a hollow form here. Well, crude altitude record. But yeah, even with its unique shape, the F-104 does not get to Mach 2 easily with this engine. And this is an unupgraded version. There are upgrades available for it. It is so far okay. The this, this wings are a little bit out from where they need to be, it looks like. Can't really make them too much smaller. This has enough trouble as it is. Yep, we did not get to Mach 2 there. Mach 1.9, but not Mach 2. Okay, well, if we're going to use those parachutes, we better. Don't really like the nose down posture. Whoa, 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 that was rough. That was rough. Whoa, okay. Okay, um, we're probably gonna make a new one. Normal recovery will be fine. Okay, so that wasn't good enough. But at least we got our Kerbal back. Alright, well, we are going to try overwhelming power. We are going to have two J79s. It's not that much more expensive, so, you know, we can just slap as many J79s on there as we need. Uh, they don't seem particularly taxing to our budget, just $3.95 a piece. Um, and we're using these air intakes, which say uh, that they are better at air collection than the XMG50 at high speeds. The XMG50 is the one we've been using at the top. Um, I didn't like it at the top because of what it did to our transonic curve, but uh, it seems all right. Uh, where they are right now very traditional location after all and i've just i just have the jets exposed we're now using a wasted tank at the center and that seems to be fine uh, there's no particular requirement to shield the engines and so there they are and we are going to build this we don't have any objections here Okay, we have two of those building, but the next thing will probably be our rocket. Oh, actually, not so much. Uh, the next one of those will be done first. Alright, launch, and here we go with Duncan Rivera again. Oh, we should pick up the contract just in case, on the off chance that we make it. Okay. Right. Well, it's got quite, a bang, quite an angle of attack to begin with here. Throttle up, 
and fly by wire on and ignition. Let's have it with most of the thrust, but not all of it. Okay, come on. Okay. I just don't want to break the landing gear. Okay, we should be good to go now. I mean, we sure have a lot of power this time. I guess we'll get more air for the engines. I don't know how bad off the engine was last time. And past Mach 1. Okay, I'm going to turn around so that we end up on land this time. Okay, we have turned and now we're accelerating for the speed run. Mach 1.8 as we're passing the Space Center. Mach 1.9. Mach 2. The speed they require is well above Mach 2, it seems. But I guess they can't specify speed and altitude or speed and air density or anything like that. Okay, there's our number. Well, we need to moderate our rate of climb there. Okay. Okay, and actually slow down here. Up, 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 up. Don't go too high. It's a little bit touchy right now. Okay, looking good. We should have five minutes easily. Mach 2.224. And we're getting the Mach 2 flight data. So that'll come in slowly. It's been a long road to Mach 2. We should come up with a niftier name for this plane. XL... Uh, J79-2 doesn't quite help anything. Um, that's not good enough to inspire people. I guess the key to this is just not minding that your jets are naked. Well, we got that cruise speed record. We've still got more than half of our fuel. We're about to complete the five minutes. So we should be able to go back. Now, can I do a Mach 2 turn? The G-forces, if you try and force that, are substantial. So we'll have to take quite a large area in order to do that turn. All right, so we've got that completed. We can try and turn. I'll add a little bit more power so that we don't slow down and knock the Mach 2 flight thing out. We're still trying to collect data after all. We need seven data for the cosmic ray science. Okay, cruising right along and still climbing. Let's see what it can do. We'll get less and less air above 20 kilometers, so I'll just flatten out here. These engines didn't go too far higher than that. Well, we got to uh, 20 kilometers, we got that altitude record. 25 is probably, I mean, on a spike this could probably do it. But we're also getting a little bit hot there. I think I'll back down. I don't want to bust them. Well, we're approaching the Space Center again, but uh, I still want to collect data and we still have plenty of fuel. Oh, I... Oh, depleted! Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean depleted? Mach 2 flight... I guess the data canisters? That's so annoying. <laughs> uh, as if you couldn't figure out some other way to be annoying. Alright, fine. Depleted. We well, didn't have enough space for any more. Oh well. We had the fuel, we just didn't have the storage capacity, I suppose. 
Once again, it's got to be hard to slow down though. I didn't put the air brakes on. We're accelerating a bit as we descend. If I deploy the... Uh, here... Doesn't seem to change our drag at all. And I wish it did. I mean, <laughs> that would be helpful. And I still think the brakes are like nerfed or whatever. I have to be careful not to go too slow while maneuvering these S turns though. Okay, I'm gonna try and hover above the runway a little bit. Make it nicer. Get the drag shoots. Okay, brakes. Definitely more drag shoot force. But not, prob not a problematic amount, so 20 seemed much better and much more what I would expect. I can't tell whether we burst the... Uh, no, the landing gear seems okay. Okay, no, let's stop. Stop. <laughs> okay. Alright, well, for the first time we sort of landed properly. I think this is how the landing gear just is. It really doesn't want to stop, does it? Okay. Yeah. We, we have a very high angle of attack right now, but I don't think it's actually sitting on the tail. So, let us recover. We actually did it properly this time. Okay, 3.3 credits. Yeah, because we didn't have enough capacity. Otherwise I got more, but alright, we at least got that done. And now we get to focus on rockets again. And we're going to go straight into rolling out the Thorish 4. Oh, uh, sorry, 6. Oh, our budget is creeping up very slowly now. <laughs> so, can we get another lingering, annoying contract done? Let's find out. SAS on, throttle is up, and... First solar-powered satellite is what we want. Okay, ignition. And launch. Aiming for the target periapsis. But well, we probably will finish that up with the next stage. Alright, close to 250. Alright, RCS on separation. Uh, fairings, we can put the fairings off. Okay. All right. Ignition. I don't know. Do we have enough? I don't think we have enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, spin up and go. Still go. Go, go. Wonder how I managed that. I mean, maybe it was wrong. It wasn't wrong. I, I don't know. Hmm. Oh, now we have lack of performance anyway. It's just thrust, though. But we didn't have the delta V. Yeah, maybe we should just knock it out with the bigger rocket. Better solar panels would be nice too. Oh. Now it's operating worse. Oh, now it's got lack of specific imp and it failed. Well, of course, the burn time got exceeded because the thrust had been knocked down. So, yeah. Yeah, well, that was definitely going to fail there anyway. But, well, we have our new pad being built. But as this satellite meets its demise, at least we got the Mach 2 thing done. Alright, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.